Thanks for listening to the Mornings with Carmen LaBerge podcast, made available thanks to support from listeners just like you. Inspiring you to bring God back into the conversation of the day. This is Mornings with Carmen LaBerge on Faith Radio. If we're gonna fly, we fly like eagles. Arms out wide. If we're gonna fear, we fear no evil. We will rise. By your power, we will go. By your spirit, we are bold. If we're gonna stand, we stand as giants. If we're gonna walk, we walk as lions. Good morning. Good morning. Let's um, let's turn in the Psalms this morning. Um, we did Psalm 1 the other day, and a, a friend um, listening texted in and said, Psalm 1 and my grandmother praying Psalm 1 over me is what led me to Jesus. And I thought, that's just awesome. I just love the testimonies of the way God uses particular words and the testimony of um, generations of Christians. Like, right, it, literally, that's how Christianity spreads, generation to generation, person to person, disciple to disciple. And so it is such a blessing to have the hymn book of the Second Temple period, also known as the Book of Psalms. And so let's let's just read Psalm two this morning. Um, maybe have Acts chapter four in the back of your mind as we're reading Psalm two today. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against His anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their uh, throw off their fetters. The one, that's a capital one, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them, and then he rebukes them in his anger. He terrifies them uh, in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. This is the psalmist writing. I will, de- I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, S-O-N, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Um, the Psalms are an incredible resource for us to turn to in times of um, travail, and in times of thanksgiving, in times of lament, in times of peace, in times when um, we feel very much alone, and in times when we are worshiping in community with others. And so I want to just commend them to you uh, in this new year. If you don't already have a Bible reading plan, I'd invite you to engage with us as we read through the Bible together at Faith Radio. We've got a Bible reading plan that you can download, um, or we'll send you a hard copy. Just go to MyFaithRadio.com. <clears throat> and you can engage in that. My precious colleague, Angela Smith, is also now doing a Reading the Bible Together radio show. So you can listen every Sunday afternoon to understand the Bible better and grow in your faith and be encouraged. This month, uh, the month of January, she's working her way through the book of the Gospel of Mark. So let me just encourage you to be engaging um, with the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and let us... Uh, Let's be walking around in the Word of God in, in order that we might walk out our faith in ways that, you know, really do honor God. I want to encourage you also this morning to pray the news. Just like if you need a hashtag for the day, maybe your hashtag could just be pray the news. Don't just listen to the news. Don't just, you know, have the news like scroll by on your screen or, you know, <clears throat> those hot takes maybe that come just in a headline or a sentence. Pause for a moment and pray the news. So earlier this morning, we had, um, you know, a pastor on from from Perry, Iowa, and we prayed with him. We asked how we could pray for him, and then we prayed with him. That's what it looks like to pray the news, not to just consider what the headline says or even, you know, what the facts are, all of which is important. 
let's think about the people. Yes, there was a shooter, 17 years old. He should be right now on the second day of the last semester of his senior year, but he's not. He took his own life yesterday after um, taking the life of a sixth grader who got caught in the crossfire, um, shooting the principal and others. Um, Let's pray for his parents. Let's pray, pray for his grandparents. Let's pray for his teachers, his coaches. Let's pray for his friends and neighbors. Um, it's just a lot of folks that we need to be praying for as we pray the news related to the shooting in Perry, Iowa. Um, Paul Perot and I learned yesterday that Perry, Iowa, is where Adam Holtz grew up. You know, Adam joins us every Friday from Focus on the Families Plugged In. He grew up in Perry, Iowa. So even as we're praying the news in relationship to that, you know, we want to be um, we want to be praying for our friends who might be connected to the story in ways that might surprise us. So we'll ask him about that in just a moment when he joins us. But let me just give you a few other headlines this morning to be praying over and praying through. Um, fentanyl deaths rose to their highest level ever in 2023. Um, We have stories this morning about individuals traveling across state lines to get abortions and individuals traveling across state lines to access assisted suicide. Guns are in the headlines today as well. Um, Americans purchased 15.8 million guns in 2023. So for 53 months in a row, um, as of, you know, the end of, of 2023, for 53 months in a row, There were more than a million guns purchased every month in America. That's a lot of folks with a lot of guns. I'm not um, I'm not making a uh, a comment about that. I'm saying we 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 as a people need to recognize that we're arming ourselves against one another. Um, That's worthy of our prayers and our prayer concerns, and our conversation. Uh, And then certainly then there are headlines from around the world that we should be praying about and praying over as well. I just want to invite you to pray the news with me today. As you you hear a a headline, as you read a headline, as something scrolls across your screen um, or, you know, over the airwaves, pray for the people involved. Pray God's will be done. Pray God gets his glory even in those circumstances where somebody meant something for evil. Like, pray the news. Engage the story in that particular way today. Um, Our brother Adam Holt is going to join us next. Again, we just learned yesterday that he grew up in Perry, Iowa. It is his hometown. So we're just going to ask him to reflect on that with us for a moment, even as we then engage some of the headlines um, that he is working on at Focus on the Families Plugged In. You're listening to Mornings with Carmen. That little jaunty music means that our brother in Christ and friend Adam Holtz is back with us. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Carmen. How are you today? Well, I I am well. It is well with my soul. Um, yeah. Paul shared with me yesterday that you grew up in Perry, Iowa, that I it did. is your hometown. So um, we just wanted to start this morning by saying how terribly sorry we are. We um, praying with you for the people of Perry and just want to give you an opportunity to, you know, I, maybe just reflect on the kind of day you had yesterday as that story yeah. unfolded. Well, I think in relationship to what you were talking about a moment ago, praying the news, there's so much bad news everywhere, right? And it's big, it's small. Uh, It it comes in so many ways and shapes and forms because, uh, you know, the old saying in the news business is if it bleeds, it leads. And back in the day, not that long ago, in our lifetimes, you got the newspaper, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening. You watch the evening news, maybe with Walter Cronkite or Dan Rather or Peter Jennings at 530. Maybe you got some local news and that was it. Um now we have a 24 7 news cycle that really started when cnn came on the scene but with the advent of the internet 
those of us who like to know what's going on, we can check our phones for news constantly. And so I was actually, <laughs> I was kind of bored in the middle of a meeting and I pulled my phone out and checked the news and that headline came up and it just, it just hit me, uh, you know, as hard as any news story I think I've ever read can hit me. And, and it reminds me that um, most of the time, the bad news we read, there's a level of abstraction to it because it's out there somewhere. You know, I remember Parkland. I remember, you know, many of these other shootings, Charleston, but I don't live there. I don't know those people. That's not my, my place. But when I read this, I'm like, I, I, I did a double take. I couldn't believe it. You know, Perry's a town of about 8,000 people and small Iowa rural town and, you know, Minnesota and Northern Iowa and North Dakota and Wisconsin, where your signal goes, it's, you know, there are a hundred or more or thousands of those sorts of towns. We don't think this kind of tragedy is ever going to come out of a place like that. And um, I think just the heartbreak of hearing that not only did this young man take his life, but, you know, the sixth grader who was killed. And now having said all that, I wanted to take this moment to share something positive and redemptive and hopeful that as far as I know has not been picked up by news outlets that I have seen anywhere. It's possible it's out there. My mother texted me last night and she cut and pasted um, a long message from uh, Principal Dan Marburger's daughter. Um, mm. And she had put it on Facebook and she thanks everybody. Uh, he says, dad was in surgery. He's currently staying all day. He's currently stable, but I don't know that she's a believer in Christ, but the, the incredibly uplifting tone of her message suggests to me that she may well be, uh, you know, she said, dad is a gentle giant, amazing person, best hugs, best pats on the back. Um, I can't even read this without choking up. And then she says, as I heard of a gunman, I instantly had a feeling my dad would be a victim as he would put himself in harm's way for the benefit of the kids and his staff. It is absolutely zero surprise to hear he tried to approach and talk to Dylan, talk Dylan down and distract him long enough for some students to get out of the cafeteria. That's just dad. Knowing dad, he's devastated about what happened today. He would be devastated about Dylan, devastated about the victims, devastated for the community as every single community member is a victim of this tragedy. And he would take it personally. What more could he do? What did he do that he couldn't? What did he not do that he could have? He'd be ex extremely saddened. And then he says, um, knowing dad, he would also say his ugly face is popping up too much online as he's getting attention as he is a deserving hero. Please reach out to other victims' families. Show grace to the Butler family as we are not our kids' mistakes and actions or our parents' mistakes and their actions. Remember, this is something Dylan's family has to live with too, as well as losing their child. And then she goes on to say, you know, let's hold on to the positive memories and share the great things about Perry. I just, I, you know, she doesn't use the word forgiveness, but to but even be in a place. Yeah, she uses the word grace. Yeah, I mean, I just. grace, and that's big. Yeah. That's huge. And I just, this just brought tears to my eyes last night. I, I read it haltingly. I did it better just now than I did last night with my family of, of somebody who seems to have um, a redemptive perspective. And I, and I love hearing, and I'm sure we'll hear more reports that, you know, she reports that he tried to step in and intervene, you know, for the sake of, of helping more kids get out and, and what a miraculous and heroic thing that is um, to have done. I'm, um, I think that when you, when you acknowledge that, you know, many times when we hear things like this, it's abstract for us because it's yeah. not a place we know. We can't immediately, we can't smell it. My guess is you can smell Perry, Iowa when oh, I yeah. say the name of the town. Um, you yep. know where the high school is, you know the roads that lead there, you know where yep. the hospital is that they were, air like, you know, you know the people, you know yeah. the places, you know the municipal airport, like on and on and on. Um, <clears throat> and so... I have that reaction um, now related to the shooting that took place here in Nashville at the Covenant School in mm. March of 2023. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. when I hear this testimony, right, of the principal really s stepping in to harm's way, 
in order that his precious students could get to safety. You know, I'm immediately reminded of Michael Hill, the custodian Mm -hmm. at the Covenant School, who literally put himself in the path. Um, Yep. uh, And 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 then the testimony, you know, he's got seven kids and the testimony of Mm -hmm. his family saying he would want to have been the first person so right. that when his little babies also got to heaven, the same person who had greeted them at school that morning would be the person who greeted them when they arrived. Yeah. There'd be somebody there they knew. Like they, yeah. and I just, I, those are the kinds of testimonies that you're like, that, that's so sticky. That sticks with me. Um, yep. I recognize it's a horrible, horrible thing. We, we in Nashville right. have a horrible anniversary coming up in just a couple of months so do hundreds of communities across the country um yeah. and and thousands and thousands of families um because every time one of these things happens anywhere it sort of rehappens in yep. in the heart in the mind and the experience the shared experience of communities where these shootings have taken place so thank you yeah. for your personal um sharing um today and and you know and as the story unfolds we invite you to tell us more of uh, you know sure. of of what you're experiencing because i i do think it helps all of us right to enter in um when it's personal so let's take yeah. a very brief break adam and then when we come back let's get to um what we normally do i'd like you to yeah. share with us some of the you know some of the top christian related films that um you know that we were able to encounter in in 2023. And then I'd really like for you to invite us to have a family tech and entertainment reset in 2024. This blog at pluggedin.com I found really helpful. So can we do that? Great. Absolutely. Would love to. All of that is up next here on Mornings with Carmen. We're talking with our brother and friend, Adam Holtz from Focus on the Families, Plugged In. What are some of the things that you find hard to believe? Do you find it hard to believe that God hears you Do you find it hard to believe that God loves you? Do you find it hard to believe that right now God knows how many hairs there are on your head and how many are on your hairbrush? Like, do you sometimes find it hard to believe that God cares about you and the stuff going on in your life right now? My friend Susie Larson wants you to be reminded every single day, every single day, that God is good. Would you like to wake up to the goodness of God? Just text the word good to 877-933-2484. Every single day, you'll get encouraging text messages, prayers, and devotions from Susie Larson right on your phone. Just text the word good to 877-933-2484. Connecting faith to life, Faith Radio. What uh, what were the best movies that you saw in 2023? Did you see Sound of Freedom? Did you see Jesus Revolution? Adam Holtz is here from Focus on the Families Plugged In. What um what films in 2023 you know sort of like made the Christian list or came out of uh, a Christian worldview? Well, those are two of the big ones, and actually those would be probably two of the biggest biggest ones. We've got now rankings of the biggest movies. Uh, you know, of, of 2023 um, and sound of freedom showed up in the top 10 and it beat out uh, the Taylor Swift eras tour movie, Indiana Jones. I mean, I think honestly it was the biggest shocker of the year. And, and this is a hard movie about sex trafficking and Jim Caviezel stars as Glenn Ballard, who's a guy who goes to South America and uh, you know, retrieves this girl out of the clutches of, you know, drug and sex traffickers in the jungles of Colombia. So it was amazing. Um, I I think hard, hard movie. It's dealt with very tastefully. It's not explicit, but not an easy movie to watch. And then of course, Jesus revolution came in at number 45 for the year. Um, And, you know, there's another movie that I would potentially commend to your listeners that my guess is unless you're really sort of paying attention to what's out there, you might've missed it. Uh, it's called mother Teresa and me. Uh, I don't have right in front of me where it's streaming, but it, uh, it's a, 
semi-fictional, semi-biographical movie. It's the fictional part is about a woman who has a crisis and uh, finds herself unexpectedly pregnant. And she goes to India and ends up volunteering in Mother Teresa's uh, ministry. But most of the movie has to do with Mother Teresa's life. And if you know anything about Mother Teresa since her death, it's come to light that she wrestled massively with doubt and a sense of God's absence for almost the entirety of her ministry. Uh, and she actually worked very hard to keep that under wraps. Um, and this is a really, really interesting movie. It is not your normal Christian movie uh, any way you want to slice it. And, and I think it's a, it's a lovely look at her life and in some ways uh, an uncomfortable look at her life because she had those just incredible struggles with um, her sense that God was not present in a way that she could feel anymore. And, um, and let me also say, uh, over the next oh, two months or so, we're going to be doing the Plugged In Movie Award nominations and shows. So starting in early February, we'll nominate five movies in four different categories. Best movies for kids, for teens, for adults, and best Christian movie. And so we'll revisit this idea of what some of the best movies of 2023 were at that point. Um, okay, you can, uh, let's see. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know where you can stream it. I was trying to find oh, that as well. Mother, but Mother Teresa. We'll just keep looking. We'll just keep looking. That's okay. A, that's a, that would be a good one for us to put on our, uh, I think, on our family watch list as well. Um, <clears throat> really appreciated the having a family tech and entertainment reset in 2024. Yeah. Um, your your uh, your colleague and our brother, Paul Acey, um, on, on the Plugged In uh, show and the blog, um, talk, talk with us about this, like, how, how does this work? How do we do it? How do we get our kids yeah. to do it? Well, I think one of the core ideas here is we need to reject all or nothing thinking. And I've mm. probably mentioned this before, but as a guy, you know, if I want to chop a tree down, metaphorically speaking, I want to get the biggest ax. I want to take one big swing and I want to knock it down. And I think it's easy for us with any kind of resolution we make to think, okay, I'm going to change everything. And you know, I want to lose weight, so I'm going to stop eating. I mean, I'm, I'm joking, obviously, but um, I think that it has to do with resetting entrenched habits in our lives, and we can reset our tech and our screen use by looking at concrete ways to make specific, measurable um, changes. So instead of saying, I'm going to be on the phone less, that's so vague that you're going to fail in a day say, you know what, on Tuesday nights, we're going to have tech free Tuesday. And I know somebody who does this. And so they put their phones away and they have a family game night. So, you know, coming up with one or two of those sorts of very concrete ways that you and your family can make a change, um, that gives you a measurable way to begin to, to change your habits. And then you know, once you successfully do that, you can build on that, you know, um, as opposed to just abstractly saying, we're going to change everything we do with screens, picking one specific thing that you can do where, you know, as the business gurus say, you can get a win uh, and then building on that. Yeah. For those of you looking for um, some help in this area, um, particularly, you know, in terms of like videos that your kids could watch. Um, I love the ministry of Filter First. You can check them out at filterfirst.org. Um, we have uh, Becky on the text line, Adam. She says, hey, we saw the shift. It's the book of oh, Job. Yeah. Um, yep. The book of Job meets the matrix would be our description. Uh, and um, yeah. uh, so she's um, she's highlighting that and you know wants to make sure that makes your list. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. People like advocating like, hey. Make sure this gets on Adam's list. In terms of things that um, are out there that we might be looking for in um, in theaters, what do you know about Freud's Last Session? Uh, Freud's Last Session is based on a stage play of the same name in which it's sort of a fictional imagining of what if uh, Sigmund Freud, the, you know, the father of psychotherapy, would have encountered C.S. Lewis um, 
in his latter days? What if they had a conversation about God and doubt and sex and everything? Um, and Freud had a daughter who was same sex attracted. So that's, uh, that's a part of the story here. But it's a really fascinating exploration. And, and ironically, perhaps, Anthony Hopkins plays Freud. And it's ironic because, of course, he played C.S. Lewis in Shadowlands. <laughs> and this is a remarkably thought-provoking movie that uh, it got a very limited release in late December. And it's rolling wider over the next week or two. Yeah, cool. So you guys, um, you can check that out. You can look on Fandango and put your zip code in and find a place where it's showing near you. Um, I'm I'm recommending it so that my C.S. Lewis junkies out there can um, can bring us, uh, you know, their take because we have a lot of those list, a lot of those folks listening, and um, it's always fun to hear from hear from them. Um, yes, I see. I'm talking to you, Bob Castro. There you go. Um, <laughs> Adam, as always, uh, thank you so much. Um, Blessings on you, prayers upon your family. And again, keep us connected to the story in Perry. We would appreciate that. I will do it. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks so much. That's our brother, Adam Holtz. You can check out what we were talking about today and so much more. Tons of great resources at Focus on the Families, PluggedIn.com. There was um, a recent survey. It wouldn't really matter where you look. I could, this could be a recent survey from, and then there could be like fill in the blank. But anyway, it happens to be from Forbes. And they found that in 2024, Americans are focused on a handful of things, improving their overall finances. So that's like number one, getting out of debt, uh, mental health and fitness. These are the three things that people, and it's in sort of like, it's those three things every single year. Um, The order just switches around. This year, the order happens to be finances, fitness, and then mental health. Last year, it was mental health, finances, and fitness. Anyway, fitness is almost always on the list. So somewhere on your um, top commitments for 2024, do you have lose weight, improve diet, make more time for loved ones, um, and or stop smoking? Well, if so, you have the same kind of commitments as your neighbors. So... um, How would you answer the question if some surveyor called you today? What are your top three priorities for 2024 in terms of how you want your life to be improved by the start of 2025? How would you answer that question? Um, My answer, less wasted time, deeper relationships, and improved health. Kim Dolan Leto is going to join us next. She's going to help keep us on track or stay on track in terms of at least our fitness goals that we've committed to. Um, She's going to tell us how to avoid the three traps the enemy uses to derail us. That's up next here on Mornings with Carmen. All right. I love that you guys are texting in um, your 2024 uh, commitments. Got a friend in the 701 area code saying... Um, more prayer time, more prayer and time in the word and more helping fellow believers. All right. If those are your top three priorities to spend more time in prayer, more time in the word of God and more time helping fellow believers, what traps might the enemy use to derail you in your pursuit of those goals? We're going to talk now with Kim Dolan Leto. Um, she's she's laying out three traps the enemy uses to derail your fitness goals, but the reality is the traps are the same uh, no matter what goals you're pursuing if you're pursuing them in Christ. So, Kim, Happy New Year, and welcome back to Mornings with Carmen. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for having me here. What a great conversation to have, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> I love um, the prayer that God would open our eyes to the schemes of the enemy and show us um, in the moment, uh, that it's a trap. So what are some of the traps that the enemy uses to derail us, um, particularly uh, in terms of our fitness goals? Oh my goodness. Well, okay. First of all, you know, he hates progress, right? So you need to be like, you want to read your Bible and then all of a sudden you just start itching or like, you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot I needed to do like, all of a sudden, you just have this barrage of like the doorbell ringing. You know, I needed to do this. Oh my goodness, the kids are running around screaming. Like, he's going to go to war with you if you are going to try to get in the word. And then I noticed that you were talking about 
uh, doing things for others or, or spending time with others. You said something about that. Mm -hmm. Whenever you start to think about other people, he is going to make you think about yourself. Mm. It's like, oh, but what about you? Like they have that. Why don't you have that? Or he'll start the comparison game, like with fitness. Well, gosh, like, look at her, you know, look at what she's been able to do. How come you haven't been able to do that? So he automatically pits you against other people to make you feel like you're a failure and you couldn't possibly do that. And he does it so subtly, like a friend will call you and say, hey, do you want to go to the gym or you want to start working out together? And then she'll say something like she'll show up and she'll look great and it'll just make you feel small. Or somebody will make a comment like, oh, how long have you been working out to her and not you? And he's just, I feel like he uses other people to set you up to get upset. Don't you mm. see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And why do I think it's about me? Like that conversation between that other person or between those two other people, that is not about me. Why do I, why do I do that? Why do I... Make it instantly about me. That's a really good question for me to, like, pursue before the Lord. Like, uh, not not me, but thee. Like, help me refocus on on Jesus, on His desire for my body to be um, a wonderful temple of the Holy Spirit, where God is pleased to dwell. Like, get me get me back from the distraction to the right focus and emphasis. Yes, yes. And that's where he comes at you. So one of the things he uses is doubt and questioning. He knows mm -hmm. exactly what's going to make you quit. And it's more subtle than you think. Like if you've been working out and eating right, and then you get on the scale and you weigh more to your shock, mm -hmm. you start questioning everything you're, you're doing and you doubt if it's even going to work. So you, you quit, right? How many times mm -hmm. do we do that? We're like, we just use the scale to measure instead of understanding that when we work out our body goes through a remodeling phase and we actually hold on to water when we start working out because our muscles are, have so much water. So initially you could actually gain weight, but eventually it will all go away. But he knows, he knows exactly how to get you to get into doubt and, and questioning so that you'll quit. So you have to tell yourself, you know, I, I know scale weight is just a measurement tool. It's going to fluctuate. It's not telling the whole story. Muscles are water, and when they're growing, there's going to be a temp temporary increase, but eventually it's going to become muscle gain, and it's going to burn more calories, and I will actually lose body fat and be healthier. Um, another thing that he uses that I want to point out that's really important is rejection. I've noticed, painfully noticed, that when God is taking you to another level, not everyone can come on the journey, and it isn't personal, Carmen. It's spiritual, but it hurts. So be on guard for when people will just like desert you out of nowhere in our, in our current mm. culture, they it's called ghosting. Like all of a the sudden they just distance themselves from you. They don't text you back. They don't, you reach out to them, but you don't hear for them from them. I want people to know that sometimes God will get you alone and away from people that aren't assigned to your destiny. And we need to like grieve and let them go. Um, if they don't want to be a part of your life anymore, if they're, you know, sometimes we need, there's certain people in our lives that are involved in habits that God has told us to lay down and they're keeping you unhealthy and we need, and so they will actually end up rejecting you and it will hurt you and harm your health. I know that spoke that, to somebody because yeah, it, it no, really absolutely. does. It, yeah. And it's a super good bridge to the other conversation that we want to have today, which is, you know, God can't do a new thing if you're holding on to the old you. So I want to, <clears throat> I want to hold that as something that you and I are going to talk specifically about here in just a moment. Um, mm -hmm. But that is really important. I, I, we take rejection personally. We just do. Um, and again, that, that is the enemy getting me thinking <clears throat> that this, that this isn't about this must be about me. Like this person must be rejecting me. And and in reality, that person is making a choice for themselves about what's best for them. And apparently mm -hmm. right now, what's best for them is not being with me on, on whatever this journey is that I'm pursuing. Now, when it comes to like Bible study or prayer, somehow we're not surprised that other people reject those invitations <laughs> to join us. And yet mm -hmm. when, when the lifestyle change that we're making, when the when the, what we're pursuing is a health goal or maybe um, a financial health goal, 
um, or a bit of physical health goal is the one that's maybe easiest to bring into focus. Um, not everybody wants to pursue that with us because not everybody is feeling called to that and they have their own shame and stuff going on over there on their side. Like you can't always make it about you. I think that's when you say it's not personal, but it hurts. Is that what you're saying? Like rejection, it, it's actually not about me. It, it is about that person making their own choice. Yeah. And we don't even understand. It could be a spiritual battle. I mean, it could sure. be the fact that like, imagine you walk into the gym, right? You're there, you don't know what you're going to do. And somebody makes you like, they look at you in a way that makes you feel rejected or like, Oh, what is she doing here? That instantly hurts you and makes you feel like, what am I doing here? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it feeds the narrative the devil wants you to get in that conversation. He wants you to get into with, with him so that he can take you out. So I think a lot of times we don't realize that you're accepted all the time by Jesus. And sometimes you are going, like you said, and, and that is exactly what I meant. Don't take it personal. He's trying to take you to a different level. He's got to get rid of things so that you can grow in him and become a new you in him. And sometimes I'm not, uh, certain things are just going to have to go. Old lifestyles, old habits. You can't become a new you in him when you're stuck in old ways. Mm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm uh, I have nothing to say because that's uh, that is me right there. Like, right. You're like, oh, well, we, well, don't we do it directly? <laughs> let, just look me straight in the eye this morning, Kim, and be like, mm hmm. This is the Lord's message for you, Carmen. Mm hmm. Oh, <laughs> that is so true. No, it's like true truth. Right. And then when you're the per you know, when you're like, oh, yeah, that's just square right between the eyes for me. I have this is a this is a rut. I have found myself in uh, and I keep falling back into, right? And so old habits are, I think, a trap the enemy uses um, to derail our fitness goals, the failures of the past, that like constantly reminding us that, well, you know, well, you weren't able to do it in 83 or 93 or 23. I mean, what makes you think you're going to mm -hmm. be able to do it in 24, right? And so um, I just think that's that's just an honest look in the mirror conversation for me to have today. And maybe, you know, as you say, there's always somebody listening for whom the message, like it's for them. It's absolutely, if you're listening right now and that's for you, hey, it was for me too. Um, I am literally right there with you. So Ken, when we come back, let's, let's pivot and let's talk specifically about that, that God cannot do a new thing if I am holding on to the old me. So God Correct. can't do a new thing if you are holding on to the old you. So we're going to talk with Kim Dolan Leto about some strategies, um, some practices, some um, some spiritual counsel when we have decided to um, cooperate with God and allow him to do a new thing. What does that mean we're going to have to let go of? Um, release our hold on that has a hold on us. That's up next here on Mornings with Carmen. Maybe you've heard that Faith Radio partners with One Child to offer you the opportunity to sponsor a child living in difficult circumstances in a hard place. Well, when you sponsor a child supplying for their needs, you change a life. And when you change the life of one child, you change the world. Your one child learns that God loves them more than they can imagine and that God's got special plans for their life. Your one child gets help with school and is taught skills like leadership and how to even overcome poverty. Your one child gets nutritious food and vital medical care that can be life-saving. You might not be able to change the world, but you can, in fact, change the life of one child. Meet the kids. Find your child at MyFaithRadio.com. Kim Dolan Leto is here with us again. You can connect with her at KimDolanLeto.com. That is where you will uh, find the podcast that we are talking about today and the resources that we're discussing. All right, Kim, let's get into it. God can't do a new thing if you're holding on to the old you. Um, what what are we addressing? And then let's um, let's unpack it together. Well, real quickly, before we leave the last conversation, I could not help but think about 
how you were, were, ta- we're basically talking about how this whole fitness thing, or maybe it's finances for you, whatever it is, food, working out, whatever that thing is that you said, I look in the mirror, I'm the same in 83, 93, 2003. It reminded me of when Moses was leading the Israelites out of Egypt. And they always say it was a, a 40 year trip that could have only taken 11 days. Like it should have only mm. taken 11 days, mm. but because they were so stubborn and they didn't even, they didn't want to rely on God's manna for the day. They were complaining, like, God will go with you and do today with you, but don't we want the whole plan? Like, we want to see, okay, well, and if I do this for 12 weeks, then I'll look this way, or I'll have this amount of money, but it's not going to work like that. Like, God wants to do today with you. He wants you to rely on Him, not yourself, not a workout, not a diet, but you've got to, sh- you've got to seek Him first in it and set goals with him. And that's what people don't do. They're like, I want worldly answers, but worldly means without God. So how as Christians can we expect success when we're not including him in our plans? So how do we do that? I mean, for people who are listening right now and, uh, you know, let's just say Sherry's listening right now and she's like, okay, well, I want to do that. I want to seek God first. I want to set goals with God. I don't actually know how to do that. Well, we need to surrender it to him. We need to have a come to Jesus moment and say, I have decided I'm not quitting. I'm doing this with God, for God, and in His the power of the Holy Spirit. I cannot do this because mm-hmm. we can. If we do it in the world, it's going to be stop, start, stop, start. We're all in. We're all out. And I had was listening to a song one day when I was putting away my Christmas tree, and it was like, I have decided. And I just kept thinking— mm. Mm. With Jesus, it's completely a completely new and fresh way to say, I'm dedicating my fitness to God. I'm doing this in Him. I've decided I'm not quitting anymore. I'm just going to take mm. it to Him. Every morning, I'm going to get up and seek Him and surrender it to Him, do the best I can. And then His mercies are new the next morning. I don't have to wake up in guilt about any missed workouts or any you know food that I ate. No, His mercy is new every morning, and I'm just going to get up and do the best I can in him. So there's key things that you can do. And that is like inviting God to your table when you eat. I always Mm -hmm. talk about this, like asking him to eat with you. If you have problems with overeating, or if you have problems not knowing what to eat there, James one five tells us that he'll give us wisdom. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him come to God and he'll give to all liberally and without reproach. Like God wants to help you. I also love Psalm 32, eight that says like, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye upon you. God wants you to take, he wants you to reach out and take his hand and walk you through this year, but he's only going to give you the day. So do each day with him, invite him to your table, invite him to your workouts, set faith goals in him. If you want to go to kimdolanletto.com, God can't do a new thing in in you I, the I, we can i don't know if you can leave the I can url send a link. but it's i can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. if you guys it'll, um, it'll if you guys show want you the direct link faith yeah. goals let me just say let me just one. tell people how to how to do this if you guys want the direct link to what we're talking about right now at kimdolanletto.com just text me at 877-933-2484 and i will send you the direct link because yeah in there kim lays out for us um, exactly how to do this, how to set faith goals. So let's um let's briefly talk about that. What um what what are faith goals as you lay them out here in this acronym F A I T H? Okay, so faith goals came from me being a marketer and a business person and setting smart goals. And I realized, you know, I wasn't setting such smart goals because I left the most important person or being or you know, I left God out of it, right? So God led me to my knees and showed me Matthew 6, that said, okay, so think about this. If you have tried everything and nothing ever worked, listen to the scripture, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added to you. We're seeking programs. We're not seeking mm-hmm. God. Maybe God is, you know, you're trying to go to a gym and do a workout you hate when God has called you to walk and listen to the word every day with him. God has got your plan and fitness in our world just tells everybody you need to do everything the same, but God wants to go all in with you and show you the plan he has for you to get healthy and fit. And it may look very different than other people. So faith goals are F stands for faith filled and specific. A is for accountable. I is for inspiring. 
T is for time-based and measurable, and H is for healthy. And all you need to do is go to this, this blog, get out a piece of paper, pray with God, write that scripture, Matthew 6, 33, across the top of the page, and go in with him and say, Lord, I've decided I don't want to quit this year. I don't want to, this is the way I want to live. I want to live for you. I want to take care of this body you gave me so that I can serve well, I can feel good, and I can live my best life for you. Yeah, we have a listener who's like, hey, is it really that God can't do a new thing if I'm holding on to the old you um, or God won't? And let me just say, God, um, it, it, it's fine either way. God won't do it because God can't do that which is contrary to his own character. And so it's not wrong to say God can't. It's also not wrong to say God won't because God won't do what God can't do because of the character of God. And so you can um, tie yourself up in semantics or you can get with the spirit of the conversation, which is really about the resistance that we have to letting go of the old things, the old ways, the old self in order that God can make of us a new creation um, in Christ Jesus, renewed uh, at the cellular level, at the, uh, at the physical level. I love the language of remodeling that you used earlier, and I wrote that down. Um, I'm going to give myself some grace in the remodeling process this year. I, um, I took note of that, Kim. Um, it, I mean, when you're remodeling, like there's a giant mess that is made. It looks terrible until, you know, right, it's actually accomplished. And so in the process of the remodeling that God is going to be doing in and through you um, this year, give yourself um, some grace and and suit up strong against the enemy. The enemy is um, going to have all kinds of schemes and is absolutely going to be prowling around in every moment looking for a way um, to destroy and devour you. Um, and so, we want to be suiting up with Ephesians chapter 6 in the midst of all of this. Kim, as always, yes. thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much, Carmen. I'm so blessed to be here. I pray people have the healthiest and happiest 2024 in Jesus, and they know they're not alone, and that they see that this is clearly a battle between the spirit and the flesh. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you are in it with us. That's Kim Dolan Leto. You can find her in the resources we talked about today, KimDolanLeto.com. I'm happy to send you the direct links. You can just text me, 877-933-2484. Oh, take a deep breath today. Um, just recognize that God is with you. God is for you. God has his heart set upon you. You are created in Christ Jesus for good works. You are God's masterpiece. Um, he's not giving up on you, and he loves you deeply. So today, as whatever news makes the headlines in your life, let's be praying. Um, let's be praying the news today. And for each and every person and circumstance that God lifts up, uh, you know, like across the viewfinder of our life. I'll be praying for you. You'll be praying for me. Let's be praying together for the people of Perry, um, Iowa, and elsewhere, and have a great weekend, and God bless. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Mornings with Carmen LaBerge. Podcasts like this are available because of your support. If it's important to you to hear things that encourage your faith, click the link in the show notes to give now. And thanks.